Hello everybody, this is Francis McInerney at North River Ventures and I want to show you something that we've been working on for the last couple of years which is what happens when Apple buys Disney. We believe Apple will buy Disney and I'm going to show you here on just two slides why this should be so. And you'll see quickly that even if Apple doesn't buy Disney it could do something similar with someone else but the Disney logic is overwhelming. Let's follow the first of these two. Very simply Apple has structured a wonderful architecture. This is a company which sits on an iCloud and it uses Wi-Fi to connect a virtuous circle through markets of ever-growing size. Each one is an order of magnitude than the one previously. And you can see here game consoles. It's not in consoles, but it does do games. PCs, laptops, these were the markets that the company entered first through tablets, phones. And we've long known that Apple was about to launch a smart TV. That TV will be in a market as large at least as tablets are today. And if you factor in that against Apple's market uh, cap to sales, you'll see a share price in the $750 range. So definitely Apple will move that direction. And we all know that Apple has moved into the markets in the trillions, healthcare and cars. And this structure inflates with the cloud. That's the key to this thing. It's so flexible, so elegant, so simple. The rate of cloud inflation is up in the left-hand corner. And you can see if you just run through the numbers here, what results is a humongous number. And a model that flexes with that number has an awful lot of merits. Now, Apple doesn't just see all these wonderful bits and pieces of product on this nice rotating circle connected to a nice cloud platform. It sees something like this. Apple wants to be a content dominator. This reverses the way all of us think about Apple. Today, we think of Apple as a company that provides an iCloud access for third-party content. Well, there's nothing about iCloud or any of this that prevents Apple from putting content across these platforms, content of its own. And that is content that it can monetize as only Apple can. Apple understands how to monetize all these things the way no one else does. So let's accept the fact that Apple is perfectly capable of being a content dominator. Now you've all seen the Beats deal that we've uh, talked about now in the press for the last week or so. The Beats deal is interesting. It's not really a huge factor, but it does do one thing. If you think of Apple, what Apple does in every single aspect of its virtuous circle and its content uh, porting is to manage very carefully how you experience Apple. And Beats allows, with both its streaming and its earphones, a new way of experiencing the Apple cloud. So let's not look at the Beats uh, deal as some kind of weird, uh, unusual deal that's eccentric or not normally Apple. It fits in this perfectly. What it really fits in is this. Yes, Apple plus Disney, Disney is Netflix on steroids. Nobody understands brand better than Apple and Disney. They don't compete with each other today. Um, they are completely uh, supportive in terms of what one does for the other. Let's also remember that Bob Iger, CEO of Disney, is chairman of Apple's board. These two companies know each other very, very well. Everything they do fits perfectly. Imagine ESPN as being a, an Apple powerhouse. You begin to understand what this could mean. And you can begin to see just how much money can be made by doing this. In other words, this deal has a lot about it that is both inevitable in terms of these two companies fit, but also financially extremely attractive. So there you have it. This is why Apple will buy Disney. Uh, we've been working on this with our partners for two years. So this is not news to us and we've worked on this assumption for a very long time and we believe that you should begin to do so too because the implications for just about everybody and I can't even count the number of industries worldwide is huge. I've been future proofing companies since 1976 and uh, I've done companies as much as 350,000 people so I do know how this works and we should start future proofing your business model too right away. My email is here. Let's work together. Talk to you soon.